بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello and welcome people to Footy Judge Mo with your counter views of Thursday but this time it's Dan Potts and Hussam of course make sure to hit that like button people if you just joined us and if you're watching this on the replay hit that like button target is as usual 300 to 400 likes live now and 500 to 600 likes if more on the replay so if you're watching this on the replay hit that like button now before you go on we got a cracking show for you breaking news the premier league might scrape ffp completely and introduce something else it's american it's called luxury tax i'm going to explain to you what that means but i think it's absolutely gonna ruin the sport they have a lot of other stuff as well they are they might actually scrape point deduction completely from the premier league and introduce something that if you can pay more you can have more so basically the richer will get the rich will get richer of course of course i know that this this news took a lot of people by surprise i'm gonna explain what i understand not everything is clear now from what i understand this is basically saying and also we'll talk about Foden, world-class Foden. We'll talk about Kai Havertz now because the conversation is about Kai Havertz. Is he a bargain for Arsenal? Is he a bargain for Arsenal? We'll talk about Liverpool and the Saki code tonight with, uh, of course, uh, Eric Ten Hag and Pochettino, Manchester United and Chelsea and the race for Europe. And we'll talk about the title race, of course. But first, we have to start with this breaking, breaking news. And let me explain to you what that means. Basically... If you overspend over what you are allowed to spend over your allowed budget, you basically can attract an extra player, but you'll have to pay a luxury tax, which you have to pay something called a fine. They call it a luxury tax. And let me explain it in simple terms, right? If Manchester City can only have wage bill of 400,000, 400 million, they can say, we're going to have a wage bill of 600 million and the extra 200 million that we weren't allowed to spend they have to pay luxury tax on it, which is might be double the tax. This money will go to the Premier League and it will be distributed. So basically, if you have the money and you can afford to pay the penalty, you're allowed to spend it. There are a lot of caveats to it. They say they might have sporting uh, uh, punishment. They might not. But basically, they are saying that PSR or whatever, which is FFP of the Premier League, isn't working. I don't know what the guys are thinking about that. But I'm going to say my opinion about it first. It's atrocious. It's terrible. It doesn't make it fair. It makes the rich get richer. And people don't realize that, for example, Man City and Newcastle, who are owned by states, can spend way more money than even the likes of Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal, even Todd Bowley, by the way, because you can go and Google how much that Todd Bowley have. It's not comparable to the Saudis. It's not comparable to the Emiratis. These guys have a lot of money. They're state-owned clubs. This basically, I know there has to be caveats, there has to be a lot of stuff in it, but from the beginning, from what it, what it looks to me, I feel like the Premier League, and we're going to come to this, are trying probably to avoid kicking Manchester City and Chelsea out. Or are trying to avoid the regulators. They're trying to govern themselves. Just, I'm not sure if Dan and Hussam, I'm going to start with Dan, if I try to explain a little bit of it. Which it's by the way, it's actually it's an American thing, luxury tax. You can Google it. It's you can as long as you can pay more, you can have more. It's as simple as that. Mate, money will ruin the game. I was told. Um, no, it won't. No, it won't. It'll make it brilliant. What is all this nonsense, man? FFP, PSR, luxury tax. Just scrap it all, man. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything unless you're going to actually actually seriously affect the people that are screwing it over, potentially cheating or being corrupt, then what is actually the point of all this stuff? Mm -hmm. If Man City and Chelsea are being told you can crack on now and we'll make it easier for you because we want to keep you in the league, if that is serious, Mo, and I know it's not that word for word and you're not saying it is that, but if that's what they're looking at and Everton and Forest, it's like, oh, we don't care about you. Just just give them deductions. What are we going to do about Chelsea and City? Oh, we want them to stay in the league, really, because they bring a lot of money in. Ah, let's, let's bring this up, this luxury tax thing. It... Hopefully it's a nasty rumour and it's not something that can ruin the game even more. I believe football was better without the Roman Abramovich era. And I'm not saying that to be salty as an Arsenal fan because football's always had money in it, right? But when these billionaires started getting involved in football, everybody said it would make it fun and not ruin it. And let's be real, it hasn't made it any better in my opinion. I don't think this news is any much better for the teams such as, um, such as us that are trying to fight it. 
let's take the PSR thing, for example, right? Newcastle have got billionaire owners, like 350 something billion, right? And they're being told, I know you've got all that money. You ain't allowed to spend it, though, because profit is sustainability. He says you're not allowed to. So Man City can sit there howling, laughing. We've got our year. We've got our team. It's, built, it's taken us a decade to build it. You ain't going to catch up now. This PSR has prevented you, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, United, Spurs from touching us. So they've got a team that they built over a decade, which is a billion pounds or whatever the hell it's costing. Yeah, if they was to sell it. And all of us is trying to catch up with that. We're trying to compete with that. And we're not allowed to now because profit and sustainability says that we're not allowed to. So Newcastle have all this money in the bank and they can't spend it. In one season, they're saying they might have to sell Bruno Gamares and Isak because of this PSR thing. This is madness, bro. So basically, it's disadvantaged everybody again, apart from the rich clubs at the top, i.e. Man City. And if this thing comes in, then is that going to make that any different? I just think the whole thing is a mess, mate. Do you think what's crazy about this is 17 clubs are vote are, are, are with it? But I don't understand it. Why are they with it? It's it's I think that it's crazy, bro. I, I actually think if this happens, it's absolutely nuts. And I think why now? Why next autumn when Man City are being tried for this? Why now? I think I think it's I think this is related to 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 the Man City charges and the Chelsea stuff and I think it's 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 ridiculous that this has been introduced. No, Who's going to make the money from the luxury tax? The Premier League, and they're going to distribute it. Mm. They're going to distribute it is questionable. Yeah, how? <laughs> yeah, they're going to distribute it is questionable because that makes no sense. This is just this is exactly what Mo is saying. It is. It's basically uh, preventing basically Chelsea and and City from like getting a harsh punishment or whatever because. The reality is we saw with Everton and, and we saw with uh, Nottingham Forest, you know, points deductions and stuff like that. If that happens to Man City or if that happens to, 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 to Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea, with the amount of charges that they could get regarding like FFP, of course, Chelsea fans kept telling us last summer about amortization, you know, just new buzzwords they kept learning. Um, but I think with, with, with the way that the Premier League is headed in, it obviously there is there is no like fairness you know there is no like there is no like equ equilibrium you know for for all this for all these clubs and stuff because at the end of the day there are clubs that can pay crazy luxury tax and there are clubs that can't can't afford to do that so it really depends on on the club and on the ownership group and as Mo said look uh, some clubs can afford to do that and it it wouldn't matter it's the same thing in the NBA by the way luxury tax is a thing in the NBA. Yes, I watch the NBA. I know about the. I know about luxury tax. Basically, there are clubs that spend over their wage limit, over their wage cap, and they just have to pay a luxury tax. So there are certain teams that you see with two, three, four superstars on the same team, and then you look at other teams, and there's like just like one guy out of a fifteen squad roster. You know, so I'll be honest with you, we all got carried away by the Gary Neville speech. And all this, but Super League is even better than the shit that's happening to football right now. Yeah, I don't get how the Premier League guys are like voting for this. Like, it, and then the problem is why now? It, it, this is what I don't understand. And 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 I, I was I, I'm gonna ask Dan this, but first, guys, there's over 300 of you here right off the bat who haven't even like kicked the show and didn't even talk about the football. And we can absolutely get to 150 likes or 200 likes within the next two minutes, guys. The like button underneath your live chat close the live chat now and hit that like button it's absolutely essential for the channel it's essential for the channel let me tell you something then let me ask you something actually i have this saying that i always said and hossam like disagrees with me that i believe that the premier league don't want to kick chelsea and man city out they just don't they want their money they want the, 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 the viewership, they want the, the power, they want the state-owned club because it helps the brand of the Premier League. Because you think about Chelsea and Manchester City by themselves, but imagine if the Premier League kicked out Arsenal, Man City and Chelsea, for example, and it's only Man United and Liverpool. It will take years to build that again, to build that competitiveness again. It will take them years. They will lose, uh, of course, viewership, they will, they will lose money. I believe that the Premier League don't want to kick Man City and Chelsea out. They will try to find a way to punish them or do something without kicking them out. And this by itself is proof that they don't want point deduction. It's not to protect Everton and Nottingham Forest. Let's just establish that. Nottingham Forest was not in the Premier League 
all all these years. Like Everton aren't the team that you don't wake up in America or South America or Africa or uh, to watch. With all due respect to all the fans, people, the money comes from viewership in Asia, in Africa, in America, in South America, right? Shared sales and all this stuff. You don't wake up in America with all due respect to watch Everton play Nottingham Forest. Right? No, nobody wakes up. If, if it's 6 and 30 in the morning, I'm not waking up for this. At, at least now. It will take time to build Everton and Nottingham Forest to be superpowers. So I will wake up in the morning to build a fan base around the world. Even though I'm not a fan of the, I'm not a fan of any club. The Premier League wants to avoid to kick them out. Do you, do you agree that the Premier League don't want to kick them out? And this is just the proof. Yeah, it seems that way if this comes in. Because for me, if I'm an Everton fan or a Forest fan right now, I'm fuming. Because they for agree me, or they, 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 the Nottingham Forest guy agrees with this. He wants to pay more. It's crazy. Uh, and listen, you know, I've, I've read the, I've just read the article now, and it says basically, um, if you want to have a go and you go down to the Championship, that's not fair. You should have to have another go again. Basically, um, where are we going here? Like this was all implicated to make it fair, <laughs> and now they're saying just give another go if you want, and we'll do luxury tax. Like, what was the point of bringing this in? This is just complete, absolute incompetence at the highest order, in my opinion. There is no understanding of what any of this stuff is. There's just acronyms flying around. Luxury tax is the next word. That will be going on for weeks now. PSR is the new one. No one heard about. FFP was first brought in. There'll be another acronym soon that comes in that keeps him. You're absolutely right, by the way, Mo. They ain't going to want to put Chelsea and Man City down to League Two. That is, I can categorically tell you that is not happening. Anybody who thinks that is happening, wake the hell up. That is not going to happen. They will probably get a fine. They might get a transfer embargo. They might get points deducted. But the last thing they will do is put them down to the Championship, League One or League Two. That is not what's going to happen. Yeah, This isn't going to be like a Juve or a Rangers situation where they go down and have to fight their way back up the leagues. They want Chelsea and Manchester City at the top. And Everton and Forest, if I'm supporting one of those clubs, I'm fuming. Because they have done, in my opinion, less wrong. Because they've actually tried to stay in the league. Not go and win everything, by the way. Everton and Forest haven't tried to get Champions Leagues, trebles, doubles, League Cups, FA Cups. They just tried to stay in the damn league by actually building their club. Now, they've done it terribly and the ownership needs questioning for sure. But actually, when you look at it, what they actually done wrong? They've overspent. Yeah, OK. Should they have to be like badly, badly treated in comparison to Chelsea and City who now just go, Do you know what? I know we've taken points off of these guys. But instead of doing that to Chelsea and City, let's bring in this luxury tax thing that says shouldn't really do it. But go on in. That's what, it, that's what it reads like in the article. You shouldn't really do it, but if you're going to, go on in. We don't mind. Nah, man, this is a joke. Absolute crazy. And it's funny because it's the luxury tax as money that the, the Premier League makes as well. So that's the funny part. Like, obviously, if if they're basically saying if you're willing to pay 200, 300 million, min, million more, you know, where you're we're willing have, to... Have all to... the players. Yeah, have... it's just, that, that's what I'm saying. So at the end of the day... You have to look at it from a money perspective because money is what makes this whole Premier League go around. And Mo is absolutely right. People don't watch for certain football clubs. They watch for other football clubs. They watch for stuff like that. And uh, it's just it's just getting to the position where you just have to question. Actually, you don't have to question. I think it's all obvious to, to us all. Like, obviously, obvious. there is there is no question. that It's, it's just all money-based. And it's funny to see that oh, who who's going to get all this luxury tax money, because it's not like they're going to distribute it. Yeah, they're going to distribute it. Distribute it what, bro? Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Distributed my ass. Come on, man. You know no one's distributing that money. Listen, I, I think actually I said that before. I still think that, as Dan said, and I agree with Dan hundred percent. They don't want to kick them out. They want to like the Premier League would rather. It, the Premier League would rather have Man City and Chelsea pay them millions now than kicking them out. It's business. It's turning into business. The last question we'll talk about this is, do we believe that this is happening because there are American owners? Lots of American owners now in the Premier League. Oh, that's a good question. Thing is, I think Americanizing football has kind of ruined it a little bit to begin with. And people need to understand, like, American rules are completely different to, to, to rules in England or Premier League rules. And, and you know what I always find funny? Tell you what I find funny. I, I remember use, um, I used to watch interviews with uh, Adam Silver, who's the NBA commissioner. 
And he always used to use the Premier League as a positive example. He's like, what happens in the Premier League is this is how they blah, blah, blah. And this is how they're the most watched league in the world and blah, blah, blah. Like, this is this is what, they, what he always says. He always uses the Premier League as a positive example. And now the Premier League has taken itself and... and, and uh, trying to and be like the NBA. Trying to be like the NBA, which makes no sense. Like, there's a reason why in the NBA... Um, this luxury tax thing is only help helping certain teams and not like other teams. And luxury taxes as Americans gets exactly Ed's Manconian therapy. That's what I'm saying. Like it's 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 a you cannot get more American than this. So we're not just using buzzwords. The reality is the problem in American sports, there is no relegation, even in their football association. There is no relegation, there is no promotion, you know, things are completely different. It's basically the top 30 NBA clubs or the top 30 NFL clubs or the top 30 whichever clubs and they just compete every year and I feel like rules in the US should not apply anywhere else because the the US has a big enough market that is self-sustainable so the NFL the NHL the NBA are all are all sports that don't need like support from the outside the reality is if the Premier League was only watched by by people from England no disrespect it would it, it would lose ninety percent of the money, that's that's the thing. So, yeah, but it makes no sense. It makes no sense that the Premier League was used as the positive example, and now here we are. You know, a bit later, they're doing luxury. Why do we want to? Why are we trying to be like America? I don't get this at all. Like one American sports sent me to sleep. I know why. You. I know why. But they're absolutely ahead. horrendous. Um, I don't really want to be seeing Jay Z and Beyonce at half time doing that because I just want to go and have a beer and then watch my football. It doesn't bother me. Why are we trying to change everything to American for me? That's the first thing. I think American sports for me, I don't really see that there needs to be any connection with British sports. Uh, for me, basketball, when you put some when you put the ball in a basket, nobody's really bothered. When you put the ball in a goal, you'll know about it. Yeah, NBA, basket, 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 basket. This is odd. Basket, basket, basket. Right, stop. The buzzer's got off. How many you got? 106. How many you got? 102. Brilliant. You won by four. Right, let's go and have Santa. Awful. Absolutely awful. Baseball sends me to sleep. Cure for insomnia. Absolutely shocking. Don't want to be anything like it. So let's keep it separate, man. I, honestly, why are we trying to copy everything like over there? Let's just keep it to what it would been like, man. Honestly, I, I, I don't get it. For me, Capitalism. I, the thing is, it's trying to copy something that doesn't work as well. That's the reality. It doesn't work. Like, it, it doesn't work for on a global stage. Like, I look at basketball and I look at, at the NFL and I look at all of that. All of these sports are sports that make money within the U.S. itself. It does not make money. Like, it's not... The, the NBA's source of income is not worldwide. The NBA's source of income is the USA. Same with the NFL, same with all these sports. And uh, it's just... You know, I feel like it's just doing too much now because luxury tax is going to open the door to all this crazy shit. Basically now, basically, Newcastle could spend 500 million this summer and it's okay, we pay luxury tax. It's okay. <laughs> okay, you want to you want to tax me here? We can have a you can have 100 million luxury tax, but I'm going to pay 500 million and get all the good players that I want and I'm going to make one of the best clubs in the world. It's just so weird. Yeah, I am. So weird. Honestly. I think it's all about capitalism. To be honest with you, I think it's all about capitalism. I don't think it's great. I think that I wanted a salary cap. Uh, I wanted. I wanted. To be honest with you, I am. I was against FFP as it stands, uh, but I wanted to have a uh, level playing field between all the teams. And now this is going to make it even worse. This is going to make people don't understand. If you Google the Cronkies. Uh, 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 what is it called? Net worth, or, or, or you Google the FSG, or you Google even the Glazers. And if you Google how much Saudis have and how much Emiratis have, it's not even close. Like, if people think that I know that Terry, well, big up Terry, he always says they're all billionaires, but there is there are levels to this game. There is someone that is worth eight billion, there is someone that was a hundred billion. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There is, there is, there are levels to this game. Like at the end, the Cronkies or FSG, they can spend so much. And at the end, these guys are American owners, American corporates. Yeah, they are owned by individuals, but they are actually companies. People don't understand. I'm Arab, right? I'm I'm Egyptian, and I lived in Saudi Arabia. This is a kingdom. Do you know what a kingdom is? The kingdom is, is the same as England, but even different. All the money 
is going to a royal family and they distribute the funds. So everything in the, in the, in the country is owned by the royal family. Everything, the pavement, everything. So basically, the government of Saudi Arabia can say, here is a, by the way, the budget for Newcastle this season is 30 billion. FSG don't have 30 billion. The Cronkies don't have 30 billion. Glazers don't. They can say, here's our budget, 30 billion. How much do you want taxes to get uh, for us to get all the big players around the world? Here it is. We'll pay you this and we'll pay you the extra tax. Even Todd Bowley, by the way, Topoli is not remotely close to how these states have, how much money these states have. People don't realize this. People think that they're all billionaires. They are all billionaires, but there are levels to this. There are big levels to this. I think this is going to ruin the sport, but I'm sure, I just want to tell people, I am sure there are caveats to this. It's not going to just be introduced like this. There will be caveats because people aren't stupid. Well, they have proved before that they are stupid in a lot of cases. In the Premier League, the people that are not Premier League, but I believe, and I said that on Joe's show, the budget for the Qatar World Cup was 50 billion because they didn't have infrastructure and didn't have anything. The budget for Germany World Cup in 2006 was 6 billion. For 2010, it was 8 billion for South Africa. For Brazil, it was 8 billion. Qatar offered 50 billion. That's how much money they have 50 billion to make the World Cup. If someone was competing to Qatar with Qatar to host the World Cup and Qatar offered 50 billion, you can't compete. Saudi Arabia, I think 2032 or something like this, you cannot compete. You, 2030, you cannot compete with them. Or 2034. You can't. You just these people have so much money that it's gonna be uncompetitive. That's my opinion. And listen, it is what it is, it's their countries, and this is how they run their countries. But at the end, I want to watch a Premier League that is competitive. That's at the end. This is why I'm a fan of the Premier League. I'm a fan of the Premier League because it's competitive. Yes, Dan doesn't like Chelsea and all the stuff. But again, Ibramovic is not Saudi. Ibramovic is not Qatar. It's not Emirates. It's just different. It's just different. But this is... Anybody want to add anything before we go to the football, actually? No. No, I'm done with that. You guys are like... <laughs> Anyway, listen, people, 500 people here. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. I know how many likes. We aren't even on 200 likes, people. Are 500 people here. Let me do a couple of super chats. Send you super chats, saying people. We'll absolutely do them. Philip is saying, big up Judge Mo and Potts. Or Sam, LFC title race ends this weekend. Maybe can get a Europe, a Europe, you fraud. Arsenal will win the title. Foden and Saka ain't poor class. Philip is a Newcastle fan. Big up, uh, Philip. Philip, let me just tell you something. Why is going to end this weekend? Liverpool Man, are Mike. playing. You're playing He's trolling. Man United He's trolling. Away. He's got to be trolling. No. He's got to be trolling. Listen, Philip, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, Emmanuel is saying false. NBA is a global sport. Yeah, yeah. Sam watches NBA, especially in China. I think, Pots, I respect your opinion, but you're speaking out of ignorance about US sports. Maybe Let's I am. Maybe I am. Give this comment up. You know, you know, Emmanuel, you know, you're, you're, you thank you for supporting the channel and stuff. But this is my problem. Sometimes people never listen to what we say and they hear like one third of the statement and then they directly want to attack. I never said NBA is not a global sport. I said the NBA is self sustainable. Listen to what I'm saying. So the Premier League schedules games at 12 30 kickoff and at 8 30 at night and 9 30 because it helps global audiences around the world. It helps the U.S. audience and the East Asian audience. The reason why Liverpool was scheduled at 12.30 kickoff, go Google it right now, is because Liverpool have a massive fan base in East Asia. 12.30 kickoff is perfect. Nighttime, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30 in East Asia, so it helps them. When it comes to NBA, I am not saying it's not a global sport. I watch the NBA. I know about the NBA. I'm saying it's self-sustainable, which means the money that comes in from the U.S., is enough for it to survive. It has nothing to do with, with with it being a global sport or not. Because using that logic, NFL is also a global sport. Like, we know this. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you so much. I agree with Hassan. Listen, talking about the football yesterday, and um, I want to start actually with a very, like, it's not like that, like, uh, it's not that tough. 
to talk about Rodri and everything. But do you guys think that Rodri is being disrespected this season with the talk of Declan Rice and how he is compared to Declan Rice? Because I've had comments yesterday on my show that saying that we disrespected Rodri by comparing him to Declan Rice. Is that Rodri scored a lot of goals? He added GA, as Hussam said yesterday. And guys, MHF is live. Myself and Hussam with a new channel. There's 500 people here. MHF is live. One of the mods, please put the link in. We're trying to build a new platform. It's called MHF. Mo and Hussam football, of course. It's MNF, but it's called MHF. Uh, so we're trying to build that brand. So I want your support, guys. We need your support. So go and subscribe to that channel. Like the latest video. It's just a brand new channel with myself and Hussam. We'll have panels. We'll have everybody there. But we're trying to build a new platform. So, you guys, I want your support. MHF. We spoke MH about that yesterday, Dan. And I want to ask you, are we disrespecting Rodri comparing him to Declan Rice? No. No, not at all. Um, Rodri's the best CDM in the world, hands down. I don't think anybody's disrespected him by saying that. How's that disrespectful? Um People might want to compare the two players because this season Declan Rice has been immense. But if you were to ask me, even as an Arsenal fan, Rodri's still better. Rodri's delivered at the world stage consistently. He's won trophies. Declan Rice is starting his career at Arsenal as a new career to try and compete for the, the, the major honours. So I don't think it's disrespectful by comparing the season that Declan Rice has had to Rodri. I think people will start to get overhyped. Certain Arsenal fans saying that Rice is the best thing since sliced bread. He's been amazing, Right. But you can't compare the two in terms of what they've done in the last few years. He's been at West Ham and finally got his first trophy. He's come to Arsenal to compete at the highest level. Rodri's been absolutely balling. Yeah, Rodri's the closest thing I've seen to Sergio Busquets. And I think that is a huge compliment. So I don't really think anyone's disrespecting Rodri. Are they saying you're disrespecting him because you haven't been bigging him up enough? Or are they saying you're disrespecting and it's an insult to put him in the same bracket as Declan Rice? That's my yes. question. No. That's it. That's it. Well, They're saying that they, a lot of teams... Team of the, team of the, we did team of the season then and we put Declan Rice ahead of Rodri. Well, this season you can have the argument and debate about how close they've been in terms of comparison and importance to their team. But if you was to ask most football fans who is the better CDM most people will pick Rodri. Most Arsenal fans will probably pick Rice. I'm not going to. There's a lot of people that believe that Rodri is clear of Rice. Are you afraid to get cooked back your player, Dan? Say again? You just don't want to get cooked back your player, brother. Back your no, player. Rubbish, Sam. Rubbish. Come on, don't you're proper me. Arsenal, bro. Proper don't Arsenal. give me that. Don't back give me that. Club. Don't give me that. You're, you're a smart guy. You're a smart guy. You know you know me. I will back say what I believe, bro. Yeah. I back my player. I back my club. That doesn't mean that I'm going to get delusioned and start putting him in world 11s. This is a good side that we've got, but they're still starting up. A lot of our, our players are young, man. And when you can play it, pair it to a Rodri, who is a similar age, I believe, to Declan Rice. I think there's only a year or two in it, if that. Two, two years. But this guy, there we go, two years. So this guy is, is one everything in football, man. Come on, let's not, let's not do that. So I don't think we're insulting Rodri by putting him in that bracket. I don't know what people have said on your channel, Mo, about it, but... Yeah, I don't think that's an insult. No, it's as simple as... Can I ask can, you a can... question, Mo? What, what, what has prompted this conversation to begin with? Because I didn't even think Rodri had a great game versus Villa anyway. Like, why are See? we saying this after Aston Villa? Because he scored and he assisted. So he's and... adding... Okay, so Hussam, he's adding GA to how brilliant he is as a DM. Okay, but Declan Rice has GA as well, if that's the logic. If but... that's the logic I'm saying. That's that the logic of people are saying that he's absolutely clear. Yeah, but that's my that, point. Uh, the game and also, that, I want to before game you go that, on. I want to. I want to. Game against Aston Villa, he wasn't amazing anyway. It was just who do you think's like, better than Hassan? Who do you think's better? I mean, I think Rodri there are differences, guys, between overall and this season. Can we just Hassan? Can we differentiate yes, yes. between this I season and overall? overall? That's what we need to do. Yeah. Overall, Rodri is better. Uh, but uh, when I when I did team of the season, I voted Rice because I think he's played better this season. And I don't think that would be crazy. But my point I is, I don't think he does anything crazy against Aston Villa. Like, it's not like Rodri had a fantastic performance. Even even with 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 the with Aston Villa, like they still kind of bypassed the press and they still kind of got through a little bit through the the, the city um, the city like midfield. I don't think Rodri's performance yesterday was his best performance just because he got GA. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge a DM using GA. I think that's mad. Yeah, same. I, I, I personally look at the moments that Declan Rice has got his team across the line and I've seen more moments this season than Rodri. Does that mean he's had a better season? Does it mean he's a better player? Debate it all you want. For me, Rodri's a better footballer. 
This season, I think it's very, very close to say he's had a better season. But from what I've seen, I'm going to be slightly biased because I watch Declan Rice every single week now. I don't watch Rodri every single week. All I know is that he's phenomenal. And for me, the best in the world. So I don't think that's insult to Rodri or disrespectful. But like, really? Come on, man. Yeah, Rodri, saw... Rodri was good yesterday. I know that Hussam is judging Rodri based on his defensive abilities and stuff like this. But people don't have... Yeah, but uh, so you, why you don't have the same energy for Busquets? Too slow, can't defend. First of all, when you say why don't you have the same energy for Busquets, when when have you and I had a Busquets conversation together? Okay, can you can we have it now? What what do you want to say? About Busquets? We have it now. What do you think about Busquets? Yeah, the best DM I've seen in my life is Claude Makelele. Oh right, okay. So we okay. Do you think, do you think now? Busquets is a good DM? Yes, I think Busquets is a good DM. Okay, is he like the best? Is he's the best number six I've seen? It's probably no. he, he's maybe top three, top two, oh, top right. three. This is for me. For me, Busquets wasn't Rodri is a better defender. Man wanted to wanted to manifest a Rod a Busquets conversation that we have never I had. You, I thought you rated Busquets that high. So I was no, no, I, I, I rate Busquets the lowest out of the, the, the three. Uh, okay, I just people. wanted I just wanted to, to make that clear. Like I wanted to understand because a lot of people tell me that Busquets is this, Busquets is that. He's very good on the ball, everything. My brother Rodri has had fantastic games this season. Rodri okay. is incredible. I will choose him over Declan Rice if the question is a blanket question. If I'm saying who performs this season, I think Rice has performed better than Rodri. That's not an insult to Rodri. Now, the game against Aston Villa, there's no emotions involved because I see the two bitches in the chat saying I'm emotional about it. I'm not being emotional at all. I'm just having a genuine conversation. Aston Villa bypassed the city press about 500 times. So... I cannot say that the DM was so incredible and amazing and, and he done this and he done that. What did he do yesterday that was special? Like, you know, at the end of the day, as we, me and you had the conversation about the Aston Villa game and it was and it was an okay game, you know, it was a first half. If it wasn't for Zaniolo from the free kick and shit, you know, maybe it's a different game. But yeah, um, there's no emotions involved. I just don't think it was a good game yesterday for Rodri. I just, I just don't think it's a, it was an amazing game anyway. I, I thought that the first half was the same. And, and let's go to the, the football. And and I, I know that, Dan, you were in the game probably most likely yesterday with the game. Yeah, I, I didn't see any of the City game at yeah, all. Yeah, I know. Phil Foden scored the hat-trick. He was all right the first half. Second half, he was very good. Um, scored the hat-trick, scored the free kick that maybe it was like a lucky free kick because Zaniolo jumped out of the way. But Foden looked absolutely great. He carried City in the second half, to be honest, in scoring goals. Him and Rodri, actually, they were very, very good. Do you think, um, the question is for people, is that do we think that City can win every game then? Yes. Yes, I do. Every game? Um, yeah, yes. I do. I said that they can win nine games in a row. They've won one. They've got eight to go. I still believe they can. There's no evidence in the last few years that suggests to me that Man City cannot go on an absolute eight-game win. There's nothing that says that they can't. They've got Spurs, which is difficult, but away. But let's be real, the way they're playing, do we really think they're going to beat Man City or draw against Man City? Not for me. I know that Aston Villa, sorry, I know that Man City will look at um, Crystal Palace and go, oh, we don't do well there. It's a 12 30 Saturday. Yeah, they'll be fine. Crystal Palace are shocking, right? They've got Fulham at Craven Cottage, which some people will look at and go, that's easy. But actually, Fulham can be difficult at Craven Cottage, as we found out, as Spurs got battered there the other week. They can turn up. I still fancy them. There is not one game I look at at the Manchester City one and go, nah, no chance of winning that one. So, yes, Man City can. Dan, you know, when I said this to Mo, he was like, oh, my God, you're playing the underdog. I'm not playing the underdog. Who, who should We've all City seen it, Mo. We've seen this Man City side for the last few years. We know what it does. Yeah, this is I've a different. Times. We'll see how it goes, but I don't think they're gonna win every game. I'll be, I'll be absolutely, I'll be amazed if Man City win every game. Every game, literally Bro, every game. Okay, Spurs away, Spurs away. I say no problem. Spurs away. I agree with you because it's their both Brighton team. away. Yeah, yeah. Allah, here we go. With this Brighton crap over and over again. <laughs> Everyone keep acting like Brighton is Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, he, when I went, I'm not saying anything. We got them next, man. I'm not. I'm not gonna uh, jinx it. We'll talk about <laughs> it. I hear, we'll I hear about... it. I hear it. But last week, last week, when I was explaining this to you, everyone thought I was crazy, and I love how everyone thinks I'm crazy. And then a game later, exactly what I said happens. But no one comes back and says, "Oh, Sam, you're right." Instead, they're being emotional bitches. That's the crazy part. 
when I watch the, the City game yesterday, who, where was KDB? No KDB, no Haaland, no Ederson, no John Stones, and they still beat Aston Villa. I said City could beat eight out of the nine remaining teams with their bench. Guess what happened? Aston Villa pulled up to the Etihad. City played their bench. City won the game. This is just how it goes. I'm not going to, and, and neither should Dan Potts, we're not going to, you know, have our title hopes based on them playing until Dan Palace Potts what away. To One second. I have, have them playing Palace away and and Brighton away. Like, oh my God, they play Brighton away. Fuck. They can't handle Roberto Di Zerbi ball. They're going to get annihilated. Come on, Mo, man. Like, if you tell me Spurs, I say, okay, now there are eight games. They can win with their eye closed. This is Manchester City we're talking about in March, April, and May. This is their bread and butter. They've been doing this over the last five, six years. So let's let's just have some shame. Let's look, at what fall, they've, let's look at this, right? They've got Crystal Palace win. Luton win. Spurs, I do believe they'll win it, right? And let's be real, that's got to be... Um, that's got to be rescheduled, by the way. You think Tottenham are going to try all their hardest for that? They're going to roll down and die and say, we don't win the league. That's what's going to happen, yeah? They don't care. They'll probably rather have Man City win the league. So they're going to roll over for that one. Brighton, I don't really think this Deserby is amazing like some people do. I, I, I think it's good that Liverpool aren't going for him. That's my that's my uh, honest opinion. Forest, they'll beat them. They're in trouble. Wolves, I think they'll beat them at home. I know they lost away. They ain't going to do that again. Fulham, Craven Cottage could be a banana skin, but I fancy them. I fancy them at home to West Ham. Eight wins. Done. Title's theirs. Yeah, exactly. That's it. So, okay. So, people, here you hear it from Dan Potts and Hossam. We should Don't actually just hand, the, we should hand the title. Points. We should hand the title to... I said Spurs that drop points. Relax. So, if they drop points only at Spurs, they will still win the league. Is yeah. your team going to win every game? No. Are Arsenal going to win no, every game? We have four games we could drop points in. They have one. They have one. Yeah. Uh, come on, it's just, I think it's actually crazy that you guys think that. I think it will be more twists and turns. So, you yeah, I mean, how, 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 how many games are dropped? How many games are dropped? You asked us if we're disrespecting Rodri. Now Two. you're disrespecting the Man City institution, you're disrespecting their whole football club. <laughs> Why are you smiling? You corrupt judge, huh? Two. Why are you smiling? I, I, I'm telling you, bro. Two, what? Two games they drop four Which? points from here. What, what, where about? Tell me, tell me the two games they're dropping. Tell us. Spurs and one of the Fulham and the Brighton game away. Oh my God! <laughs> mm-hmm. Guys, the reason why Liverpool are Arsenal to win the league is Fulham and Brighton. Guys, let's go! <laughs> I woke up today feeling like a seagull. I'm flying! Yay! <laughs> you get me. Come on, Mo man! Come on, Mo man! Please, City are favourites. They're favourites. It's not narratives. It's not. It's not. I'm not trying to play underdog. I know Potts is the same. I'm not trying to play underdog. There's no, there's no such thing. The reality is their running is pathetic. They can win eight of their games with their bench. And let's stop being delusional. Thank you very much. Only way Liverpool and Arsenal can win the league, you know how? If we ourselves win nine from nine. That's it. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, give up. Yeah, I agree. I think we got to win all eight of our games. We've only got eight. Obviously, Liverpool are going to smash Sheffield United by five tonight easily. And then I think we've got to win all the rest of our games if we want to win this league. Because we, that means that Man City can do absolutely nothing about it. They can win 12-0 in every single game. If we win all of our games, it's calm. We're ahead of them. So Liverpool, I feel... I don't know I, I don't know about Liverpool as well. I, I fancy Liverpool to do very well looking at the fixtures. I think there's potentially two games that they could drop points. But Man City... I haven't... Liverpool have got an unbelievable record under Klopp in the last four years, in their last nine. I think they've won seven or eight out of nine in, in the last four years. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Sam. Man City, they just don't they don't drop points, man. They're a good, they're a, a yeah. top quality side. This is a side that, by the way, when we got a draw against them, everyone, and I've never known everyone talk about a draw for so long in their lives, of a nil-nil boring game, by the way, and lose their heads because that's just what Arsenal do is rattle everybody. But, they they we were going in there and everyone was going. I think this is a depleted Man City side. Arsenal can easily get this side. This side has lost once in thirty three games. Well, how is that? A, how is that a bad Man City side? I just don't get it. For me, I, I still have Man City to win the league. So there we go. Okay, here it yeah. is. Man City will okay. win the league. Uh, hey, I love it, guys. Listen, I got two guys here, an Arsenal fan, Dan Pot, and a Liverpool fan, Sam from This Is Football. Make sure to like and subscribe to their channels. Both of them are sitting here on Footy Judge Mo saying that, yeah, yeah, and Man City, the title. Absolute fantastic. 
advertisement for the Premier League. Great. Look at the smiles. Look at both of them smile. Right. Nobody wants to get cooked. Nobody wants to have chest. Mo, Mo, knows, what he's do- Mo knows what he's doing as well. Though. No Let me one. Just, yeah, of course, does. I know what I'm doing. Of course, talking I know about getting doing. cooked and chest oh and God, all. Nobody this. wants to have. To that. Nobody. Data, Opta, running, say that Liverpool are favourites. Yes, I'm not saying Arsenal will win the league. I'm not going to say that. But Liverpool playing underdogs. Then Opta tell you Arsenal will win the league last season. What happened? Tell the world, please. They got injured. Tell the world, Mister Opta. Opta Mall. Opta doesn't predict injuries. You just don't listen. Uh, my point is, Sam, in the same mouth, same breath, he says that Man City weren't good yesterday at home, because I know he's come back to this. Man City weren't good at home, and they should have been 3-1 down, but Aston Villa missed their chances. I'm not saying that Man City will drop points at home. I'm saying that there is a possibility that Man City away from home, away from home, can drop points. City fans if themselves Man's, will tell you they weren't good in the first half. If Ma- they weren't good in the first half, that yeah. was at home. And you want to tell me that away from home, they are still full on conclusion that they win every game. I actually no. believe if Man City win every game from here until the end of the season, you said Spurs, they might drop points. So come on. Yes. If Man City That's win every game, game from here though. until the end of the season, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. So support. you yourself are saying uh, they're going to win all the games? No, no, no. If Man City win all their games from here until the end of the season, I'll be surprised. Okay, but I won't be surprised. That's the difference. Me neither. Yeah, I've seen this before. I've seen this move before. This is the thing. And when you say stuff like, you know, I will not be surprised and I will not be sure and I, and I will be surprised and I'll be shocked. You're actually disrespecting Man City because they've been doing this. This, this is their time, March, April, May. This is the Man City time right here. So, um, you know, and, and you're saying Opta doesn't count injuries. Yeah, but why are you acting like Rodri's injured or like someone's injured? They don't have any important player out anyway. Like with Arsenal, Saliba was out, right? Fair enough. Yeah, but what, they don't have an important player that was out. Like they don't have anyone injured anyway. So I cannot build, I cannot build my title hopes based on an injury that has not happened. Or based on, on on them dropping points to Fulham or Brighton. That's just not kind of how... Where, where do you think you'll drop points for Sam? Where do you think you'll drop points? Because you obviously don't have... You don't think you'll win. So, but you, that I think there are four, points. Points, four games. Four games? Four games where Liverpool could drop points. No, yeah, you me and you actually have a tough run. In. These yeah, guys do, have but I don't think you'll lose, and lose and points in four games. No, I think no, no, you no, might no, drop maybe two games. Could drop points, not well. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just saying possibly, possibilities. So I'm saying Everton away, United away, you Aston won't Villa away, away, Spurs at home. Those are the four games I think are going to... Villa, are, and, are Ever- Villa, and, uh, Villa and Spurs, I, 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 I understand why you're saying it. Manchester United, I know that this weekend, I just I just don't see that, man. I just don't see you losing that game or drawing Come on, that game. Dan, man. That's the biggest game in English football. You've been watching football for, for Listen, way too long. You know. Yeah. Uh, did you see Manchester United against Brentford? The absolute shambles and embarrassment. If you do not, if you do not, you so you know what? I, I'll use the term. You must. Oh, you, must. you went there. You, you actually must. went there. You fully said you, you must. must. Wow, you Dan. must be wow. Manchester United. You must beat wow, Manchester United. Wow, wow, Can you imagine the uproar if they dent your title challenge? It will be an embarrassment and a shambles for you. Same with us when we go to Tottenham, by the way. Yeah. And we've got to go Old Trafford as well. Difficult I games for us both. Saying, however, you saw in the FA Cup game, they always raise their game when they play us. Dan, yeah, you, I, I, you lost that game, though. Time. They didn't win that game. You lost it. You lost it. Okay, so that's you fine. can't do that again, watching, We could lose it again then. Using that logic, we can lose it again. Mate, you've, you've got to have the mental, mental strength to, to not lose it, my friend. You've got I, I, I agree. Win. I agree. On paper, yes. But even Everton, please, for so Sam, don't tell me that Everton is a bad game. Have you seen them this season? It's the Merseyside Derby. We have a bad oh, record. Good. Good. Form goes out the window, all that crap. Everton are the worst team on the football I've ever seen in the league. They are absolutely abysmal. Absolutely they abysmal. They don't be good on the football. They can just be physical. Off the ball, they're okay. But on the ball... Yeah. Embarrassing. All you also got to do is that, score and you've won the game against Everton pretty much. Okay, Dan, let me just say this to you, right? When you look at the Liverpool United fixture across the Premier League history, you've been you've probably been alive more where Liverpool were bad than when we were good. Correct. And when United were good and, and, and we were bad, they always came to Anfield and we gave them a game with worse managers, with worse players than the ones they have now, even. We gave them a game. 
what I will not do is go like the biggest game in English football is easy because Brentford got a one-one draw. I cannot do this because they will always raise their levels when we play us. Same th- when they play us. Sorry. Same way we raised our levels when we played them. You need to understand, Potts. This is Manchester United's cup final. This is it. This is their biggest and I game think of the season. You'll comfortably beat them. I I hope so. On paper, <laughs> we should. We are the better team, hundred percent. But if I'm saying, if I'm taking the intangibles into account and I'm talking about it as a rivalry and I'm talking about it as a, you know, as a competitive game, I don't think it's going to be easy. But those are the four games that worry me. Does it mean I think we're going to drop points in all four games? No. But it all it all it's going to take is drop points in one game. Drop points in one game. What about West Ham game. away? You think you'll beat West Ham away? Yeah, I think that's an easier game. Fair enough. Yeah. Mo, am I, I alone I, here? Am I alone here? You're very quiet, Mo. No, I was I was actually looking at the running and actually seeing exactly which games. I actually disagree with Hassan. I think the cup game proves that Liverpool should smash Manchester United. Liverpool were really in control of that game. They just threw the game away. Yeah, I think that game, we'll see. Yes, United, Manchester United and all of this. That's a derby. Biggest game in English football. Number one, it's not. Um, it's not anymore. Man United is absolutely shambolic and atrocious. We have to all uh, like know that they have no tactics. Uh, their players are making mistakes uh, right, left, and center. Um, their coach is on the hot seat. Uh, their owners now they're talking about bringing a championship manager. What, what's his name uh, from Ipswich to manage the, the team? Uh, Manchester United, Liverpool should go there. I'm not saying they should smash them, but I'm saying it should be an easy game for Liverpool in terms of like they should win it 2 0, 3 1, something like that. Even if Man United defend very deep, I, I think actually Liverpool, I'm gonna say that, and I'm not I'm not doing whatever people want to defend deep more though, ultra deep. They do you know that? Again? Is, huh? Say that again. Yeah. You know, you know, Man United have Lissandro out and uh... Lissandro's back. No, 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 no. Lissandro and Varane is out. You know, yeah, this is out. worse. For us. Okay, out, so that right? means you and then and then you tell no, me. No, this is worse for us because it's Maguire and Evans will play the dirtiest slow block known to man. No, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Like I know Martinez might they, they, they might move the ball up, but I don't think I think Liverpool will have enough. I'm gonna tell you something, Osam. If you don't beat Man United, you don't deserve to win the league. And I believe you are one of the three teams. And let me just finish. And I believe the Uh three teams deserve to win the league. Yeah, it's only going to be one. But at the current moment, the three teams did enough to actually be considered you're worthy of winning the league title. Until now. Until game week 30 now. Right? There's eight games left. Or game week 29. So the three teams did enough until this moment. Whoever is going to drop... To be honest, if Arsenal drop points at Man United, to be honest, I think they don't deserve to win the league. Is I'm not saying that because it's uh, uh, if Arsenal drop points again is Brighton or Spurs away, they still it's a tough game. I believe Manchester United at the current moment should not be a competition to Liverpool and Arsenal. Tactically, they yeah, are but at the same time, Arsenal should be beating Spurs on paper. It's the no, North London Derby. Actually, so I'm keeping no. the same energy. Actually, no. Actually, that's okay. But what is well, well, okay? If I use Potts's that, but see, logic, I disagree with you here. On this, okay, but, but let, let me use Potts's logic against him, just for factually yeah, speaking. Okay. Potts said, Brentford, you know, they had 80 touches in Man United's box, blah blah blah. Okay, Potsy, Wolves went away to Spurs and beat them. So, using your logic, you should beat them as well. I Fulham actually beat them. totally agree with Hassan. Uh, we should. <laughs> We should be. Um, I look at what Spurs are doing with the high line and I think Angie's team can be got at and I think this Arsenal team should be able to do it. I think defensively we're solid. I'm not going into the Tottenham game going, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to pick up a point here. Nah, we have to beat them. And I'm going into every game like that because on paper right now, Arsenal are a team that should be delivering. We've played Man City and Liverpool twice. We've got four points off of both of them. I don't look at any of the other teams now and go, no chance beating them. But I know this Arsenal. And I know what will happen. We will we will drop points in two games, I believe. Oh I don't know God. whereabouts, but I do believe it's going to happen. So that's where and I'm I will, And I believe we will drop points too. There we go. And no Man City fan thinks that they're going to drop points. So Man City first, Liverpool second, Arsenal third. There we go. The league title is decided on footage of more counter views on well, Thursday, April 4th of 2024. Luckily, Mo, uh, not Mo, you're Mo. Hopefully, and not Sam and I, yeah, Sam and I hopefully will be wrong. 
That's what we both yes. hope. So it's so all hope. I hope Liverpool win the so league. It's all hope. It is hope. It is hope. All hope. I don't believe. I don't believe because we haven't got over the line yet. Hassan might be different because Klopp has got over the line, but Arteta and his Arsenal he side. Doesn't, he doesn't trust Klopp. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with trust Klopp. Don't do that, Mom. Don't do that, Mom. Don't, 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 don't lie <laughs> on my just name. That grenade, that one, specifically, don't lie because I was one of the few Liverpool fans that was not Klopp out last last season. Don't, don't do this annoying shit. And 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 stop acting like you're the super computer. You get I'm me? Telling us which te- which team not, which games are the tough games. I use logic. City. I use logic. The only way they we, we win the league is if City I'm from them. outside and I use logic. You guys are both emotional fans, and I use logic from outside. Okay, you want me to use logic? Liverpool this season. Let me let me be logical. Liverpool this season have beaten one top six side, Aston Villa at home. If you want to go big six, we've beaten one big six side, Chelsea at home. We play United, Spurs, Aston Villa. Three of them. So that's you want logic? That's logic. Everton is a is a is a Merseyside derby, and it might be their last game at Goodison. Yalla, that's logic. In my opinion, Why are you quiet now? All, all in my opinion, I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm watching Liverpool this season, and if you're gonna say Arsenal should beat Spurs, Liverpool as well should beat the other teams. They are well suited to play Aston Villa away from home as well. It will be a tough game. I say you might drop points against Aston Villa away. This is the team that I said you might drop points against. You play Aston Villa away, you might drop points. I'm not saying you're gonna win all your games. As I'm saying, Man City as well. If I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna say Arsenal, league. if Arsenal gonna go to Brighton this weekend, I'm giving Brighton because it's the closest game to us for for Arsenal. If Arsenal go to Brighton and beat them, why you should drop points to Manchester United? Because Manchester United are gonna are gonna play low block. I don't think Manchester United are going to play a, a very low block against Arsenal at home. They might do it against Liverpool. They might not do it against Spurs, against Arsenal. Arsenal will go to Spurs. It's a tough game, and I'm, I'm I don't know what to expect from that game because it depends on, on the form at that time and there's Champions League and all this stuff. But Spurs, as you guys said, are suited for Arsenal to play against them. I expect Arsenal. They might drop points there. They might, but I'm also expecting City to drop points against Spurs because I'm looking at this Manchester City team. And their defense is wide open. And if Spurs bypass their press, they're on for a chance every 10 minutes. So Spurs have a young men's son, and I believe they can score against Manchester City. I'm using the same logic that people say. The only reason why people say that Manchester City will win every game from now until the end of the season is that we have seen this movie before, as Sam said. Well, I haven't said this that, Mo. You literally just said, I have seen this no, movie. No, I said Spurs. You, Spurs. you literally said that. Spurs like, Spurs Var check. VAR check penalty. You literally said that particular word. I've seen that. No, word. no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said Spurs I said, away, they'll drop points. I said that. Huh? I, I said Spurs away, they'll drop points. I said the other eight games, okay. they can win with their bench. Okay, my point is, I still so think... Spurs, I agree. Can. Spurs, I think they could drop points. I still 100%. think they can drop points. Manchester City and other games. I believe there are more twists and turns in this title. Um, if Arsenal win again as Brighton away, I believe they can win... Maybe after this, Arsenal, you have eight games. You can win six out of seven if you win against Brighton. Six out of seven. That will put mm-hmm. you in a very good place, but that might not win you the title because Liverpool as well might win six out of the seven last games and Liverpool might win the title there. That's what I'm saying. It, but guys, there's only eight games left, nine games for Liverpool, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to win against Sheffield United today. We all know it. We all know that. We're under Sheffield. I had us, I had us losing, uh, sorry, I had us dropping uh, points in three games. One of them was the uh, he had that's happened, and the other two. I think I don't hope we don't do this. By the way, of course, but I think we will drop points in the North London derby because it is a North London derby, and I just feel that there could be potential for that to happen. We should beat him, as I've mentioned to Sam, and as I believe so as well. But I think that could be a draw, and I also believe um, that we can drop in one of either this weekend or Wolves away. The, them two games for me away from home, I think could be difficult. I agree. Man. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. The way not... because it's after Allianz Arena as well. That's the there thing. we go. There we go. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I want to go. I want to go, guys. There's about over 700 people here. Can we get to 350 likes, people? Come on, people. Support the channel. Get the likes up, people. One super chat came through. Tevin is saying, as a destructive CDM, Rice is better. As a controller, Rodri is better. But the gap as a destroyer is closer than the gap as a controller. Rice has something over Rodri. And the stats and the artists show that driving with the ball, covering distance with the I ball. I agree with that. Rice yeah. has the most in the Premier League. So Rice takes the ball and drive with the ball. 
so that he has over Rodri as well. Rodri completes more passes. But and I, I, I feel like Rodri is more, more creative than Declan Rice. And the gap is big. Rodri is more creative than Declan Rice. Um, I want to move to actually Kai Havertz selective. And I want to speak to Dan about Kai Havertz. You are in the biggest fan of Kai Havertz. You are in the biggest fan of Kai Havertz, Dan. But me and Hussam were speaking yesterday about the resurrection. The Bayern Leverkusen form. That, that by itself is an achievement if he can if he can get Kai Havertz to the Bayern Leverkusen form before he joined Chelsea. I think that is an achievement. That would be a, do you believe that would be a bargain for Declan Rice for uh, Kai Havertz if he reached that level? What Number level one, did you that? like his game yesterday first in the stadium? Did you think he was good? Uh, I thought he was okay yesterday. I thought he put himself about. Um, I thought he tried to make a nuisance of himself, but it was similar yesterday to the Kai Havertz um, that we've been seeing. Uh, bargain, 65 million. 17 goals at Leverkusen. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that would be. But I don't think he's going to get that. Do you uh, believe next he... season he might. But so, you don't think it, so you think in the future he can be your starting? A starting in the starting 11? Can I have it? Um, at the moment, he's put himself in a starting position. You can't drop him right now because he has been great. I mean, the goals and assists tell you that, right? Since Dubai, he has been one of our most important players. Um, I'm not a massive fan of him. I use the eye test quite a lot. And for me, I don't look at him um, and go, wow, this guy is uh, going to be an elite player. People have tried to compare him to Van Persie, Berbatov, Burkamp. I don't know what people are seeing. Like, it's a massive insult to me. Those, those names are mentioned in the same bracket as Kai Havertz, right? Very, very different in my opinions. However, I like what he's done. Since January, I like what he's done. I think he's got real good late runs into the box. He's consisted, uh, he's contributed, sorry. He's managed to put us in positions where we, he's killed games off for us. He's won us games. He's not just scored in the games against West Ham and Sheffield United and Burnley, where we were already 3 4 5 nil up, right? He's done a lot more. When you look at the goal he scored against Brighton, that was to kill the game off and win the game for us. When he scored home and away in the last minute against Brentford, that's collected us six points. He was part of the 4-3 thriller at Luton that won us three points. He has definitely got us across the line. He is not a flop. He's done well, and it's been a good first season for him at Arsenal. Wow. He's already sorted more. I think he's got more GA than he ever has at Chelsea already yeah. in his first yes. season at Arsenal, right? That yeah. means it's not been a flop. Is it a bargain? Not for me yet. Could it be? Well, yeah, if he's going to go be a starter and he's going to start con consistently contributing, then yeah, we can start talking about it being a bargain. But 65 million is still a lot of money. If you think that would have got you um, potentially a centre forward that would go and get you the kind of 15, 20 goals that people are saying, then potentially it's not a bargain. But I think a lot of people are looking at this signing and saying, hold my hands up, big up to Arteta, I got it wrong, Mikel Arteta's doubt, proved doubt was wrong, blah, blah, blah. Because let's be real, Mo, when he was playing in the attacking eight, he looked a shambles to start with, mate. But like, that's clearly really better than that he realised that he doesn't work there and he moved him to the centre forward. And, and that's the point. So that is the point. Around November time, I was like, why are we still using this guy as a midfielder? Bring him on with 25 minutes to go, make him an Olivier Giroud type centre forward and make a nuisance of himself. And now we're starting to see that oh, further up the pitch, he's playing better. And from uh, January onwards, when, since the Dubai claim, as everyone says, he has been phenomenal. <laughs> he's been really good. That is what it is, everyone says, since Dubai. Hey, to be everyone... honest, listen, over the last week, it's been a bit hotter over here and I'm enjoying it. Like, you know, I'm a bit more <laughs> jolly as well. I'm a bit more happy. So it could be, you know. that Maybe it is the Dubai fix, but I must say, I, I've been a big fan of him. But I don't know what you guys think. Maybe you guys think he's, he's like not as good it. as what people are saying. But If you're saying it from a money perspective, you could have factually had Alexis McAllister and 30 million in your bank account or yep. 60 million. Which is and why I don't you think want, he's a Your guy. ultimate eight, by the way. That's the ultimate eight the for ultimate Arsenal. The definition of exactly what Arsenal needs. <laughs> Arsenal need. Because, because, because Mo will tell you, I've been very high on McAllister this season. I've been very pro McAllister. And that guy has been balling Great out player. every single game. He's just been he's just been on some next level shit. We saw him even dominate the City midfield, you know, funnily enough. So, uh, no, I can I just pretty say Sam, as well, right? Because I agree with you on, on McAllister. I think he's quality, right? But there was a lot of comparisons to who we could have got, right? And I was one of those. Ah, oh, Cole Palmer, we could have got. We could have got Sobers Live. We could have got Alexis McAllister. We could have got James Madison. We could have got Kudus. I agree with all that. But then I look at the GA and I'm like, Havertz has got more than all of them. So 
actually yes or you could have signed a striker that's where it's a different conversation if you sign the striker i mean for, yeah, for yeah. the have if you sign the striker you're talking about the eights i hear you but uh, ga wise most of his ga he got up top agreed that's, agreed. The, that's the reality that's the reality well, the, the, the same the, the way we shouldn't guy... be comparing rodri oh. and rice using ga we shouldn't be comparing midfielders using ga because then bruno would be someone we'd rate no one rates bruno he's crap so, um, but I, I feel like maybe if Arsenal bought a striker, they could be slightly in a better position right now. But look, Havertz has been playing well. I think this is the most GA he's had in Premier League. Like yep. he's this more than any other Chelsea season. So I'm just looking at at, at Kai Havertz to see this over the last maybe two months. He's been he's been a bit better. He's been he's actually been a lot better. I, I think it's unfair to say a bit better. I think he's been a lot better. And even up front, I think maybe it allows him to to play his game more than anything else. Even the assist he had for Odegaard, just sometimes just the simple shit like that, it mm-hmm. helps it helps out. You know, he can do the simple stuff, basically, the basics of football. Shut up Fabian Delph. The basics of football. You know, he can do the basics of football. Why do no, what is this stupid comment about Lee and Dan Potts and all this stuff? I'm, what is this? I don't that know where Dan is one of the Who most reasonable guys. I'm like, it's, anyway, don't, don't worry about it. Freeloaders. Um, someone just says is, that you're a crybaby and you're just another league gunner crybaby. And oh my God, that's just, how is this people? I know, somebody, I what if someone speaks their mind? Are oh, they crybaby? Why is it too negative? Uh, yeah, there was someone earlier on calling me emotional just because I said Rodri wasn't amazing against Aston Villa. Imagine. And he's the biggest. El Patron in London will ever. always be red. Yeah, um, and then turns out he supports my club. Oh, the billah. <laughs> anyway, guys, who, who said... is it? He's saying it. I don't even know. What's his name? Who is hey, it? God, do you want to see the comment? It's yeah, go on, put it up. I don't care. You know me. I don't put comments like like like. Question I have for you: even a super chat. Negative. Why are negative pots? I mean, the guy can't talk English to start with. Why would he say that he never wanted him at this club? He's another league on a crybaby. Um. Listen, I want my football club to win. And uh, if that makes me a crybaby, it's calm. Um, it doesn't bother me. If we win, I'm happy. If we lose, I'm annoyed. And uh, if people want to say that's crybaby, negative, toxic, then keep watching me, man. I don't know why you are, but you obviously think I'm toxic and negative. Maybe, what the they're, hell not you maybe they're watching us, not you. you know. maybe. Well, maybe, maybe they are. are. Maybe they are. <laughs> Have you ever thought about you that? Have you, Have you ever thought about that, 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 that? Maybe that's what it is. But uh, cheers, for, <laughs> cheers for rubbishing my comment there, man. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, no, I, I actually for this thing. To be honest, I don't think Dan Potts is negative at all. Absolutely not. I really don't. Absolutely not. I really don't. I like if listening I to Dan, Dan Potts when he talks about his club and his his face, but I just don't think so. I think he's very, he's very uh, grounded and 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 he just says his opinion. And at the end of the day, saying uh, you didn't want Havertz at Arsenal. Bro, everyone raised their eyebrows when when Havertz signed for Arsenal anyway. Can everyone stop acting like everyone's like, oh, yay, they signed Havertz. We're in trouble. I no told you said... so. They tell you, I told you so. Yeah, yeah no one says you that. Ask them, you ask them, who's on your transfer list? And then none of them say Havertz once. The minute we no. sign him, they're like, oh, that is, that is the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted. They did the same with um, Fabi Vieira. Nobody watched him. And then we signed him and they're like, I'll tell you what, I'm really happy about that. And I'm like, you've never seen this guy play. <laughs> you have literally never watched the Portugal League, ever. Not once was he linked with us. Not once did Dunman say, I want Fabio Vieira. It's just crazy, man. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, here Pedro he is. Look, uh, that's how you don't watch him. I watch him on AFTV. Why is he watching me on AFTV if I'm negative? This is what I don't get. I don't get this. I don't get this. They're obsessed with me. They watch me, but they're happy to slay me. I don't get it. It's bizarre. Really bizarre. But come on, man. Uh, I, if fame. people don't agree it's with my fame. opinion, you're famous, Potts. You're damn, famous. You're a celebrity you're now. You're you famous. Made, I can't give a damn, man. You made it. <laughs> you made it. You made it. That's what they know. Yeah, that's what Mom, they say. You know, he made it. He made Potts it. Celebrity. Mom. Let's go. Potts it, it the celebrity. Is, man. I'm here. It is, man. Potts red carpet <laughs> next season. Hey, red, red carpet for him next year. You know, yeah. he stopped responding to our WhatsApp messages. You know, it's bizarre, man. Kenneth, thank you, Kenneth, for supporting the channel and sending super chats. Uh, ready for losers Classico tonight. El El Classico, big up the panel. You never walk alone. What AFC, says El Classico. El Classico, yeah. <laughs> That's freaking amazing. 
Oh my god, but I said El Clasico, you know? El, like El Clasico. I love that comment, <laughs> Kenneth. Yes, oh. uh, AFC is looking balanced. LFC, we have to be perfect. Liverpool, Aid Mubarak next. Thank you so much. Aid Mubarak to you as thank well. You, Kenneth, thank you so much. That's Abibi, so appreciate you so much. Talking about El Sakico or El Clasico tonight. Portugal, El you know? Clasico. El, El, El Clasico. El Sakico. El Clasico. El Sakeko tonight. Thoughts on the game on Old Trafford uh, for both of you, to be honest. We're about to get oh, into this, it this, now. I mean. No, no, no. Game for Old Trafford for both of you. Uh, oh. Both of you play Man United away. Quick. Oh, okay. I thought oh, you meant um, yeah, Man United, yeah. Chelsea. Sorry, sorry. Man United, Chelsea. I thought you meant. Um, I, I believe this is the time that we just... I, I said it to Sam. You must. I believe we must. Uh, this is a team that are dreadful. I literally do not understand anything about the club. They're top to bottom, absolutely rotten to the core. Um, I'm here for it. I can't stand the club. I hated, I've hated them since I was young because we went up against them. And uh, this is a club that I am laughing at very, very hard right now. So I hope that we don't get embarrassed when we go to Old Trafford. They can turn it on. Sam's not wrong. You know, they yes. can turn it up against Liverpool, Arsenal. They want to beat those type of sides. But I would be amazed if there's any Manchester United fan that sat there and looked me in the eye and said, I really hope we beat you so you don't win the title when Liverpool and Man City do. That's what I'm saying. Fairs, I, I know I know a couple who are like that still, to be honest with you. Like, oh, Arsenal fans are the worst fans in the world. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, okay. But I, I, I look at the... Some United of us are, to be fair. Play. Some of our fan base is a joke. I can't lie. But I think every fan base does have that as a okay. section like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I had someone in the comments earlier on who's a Liverpool fan like that, you know? It's just, yeah, it's just... Crazy, it's crazy uh, pots in the streets. But I think that look, when, when it's a game like this, thing is, most said it yesterday, Man United are the absolute definition of the table lies. They're actually the definition of the table does lie because they're somehow fifth and it makes no damn sense how they're fifth. Like when you watch them, you feel like you're watching a team who's like 15th. I would go as far as to say, I think they've played even worse than Chelsea, honestly. And I, and I know Chelsea are like 11th or whatever, but. Still, like, when I watch Chelsea, at least Chelsea are the ones missing chances and shit. When I watch United, they're just getting annihilated. I'm just looking at the game, and it's the biggest game in English football. And Man United will always give 10% extra each player to beat Liverpool and get, or get a result. That's why it's going to be a tough game. On paper, we should be beating them, you know, but the records don't lie. In this season, we've played them twice. We haven't beaten them yet. So let's hope it's our first one this Sunday. Mm, uh, talking about you. this today's game, do you guys think El Crapico? El Crapico. Do you think who is gonna who's winning the? Let me actually get. I'm actually gonna end it here. Actually, I'm gonna end the show here. Uh, listen, people, this is gonna take you to MHF. I want every one of you to go and subscribe to MHF, like the video, um, subscribe to the channel before you. Leave this. This is going to take you to MHF where me and Osama will do a show tonight. Big up everybody that joined us. Kind of Bermuda going to just ruin the vibes, to be honest. I uh, appreciate everyone. Um, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. And we are out of here. But guys, make sure to like MHF. Subscribe to that if you are uh, there.